How to create amazing brushes in Affinity Photo. Literally millions of different designs can be created, something like this, all from very basic shapes. So let's just remove this layer and just go over here and rectangle tool. Select that and drag, create a rectangle. Then simply hold down the ultra option key and drag, that duplicates that shape. And you can repeat that. Now I don't want the same colors, so what I want is go this one and I can simply go over here and I can change color. Maybe go with red and then select this one and double click and change that maybe to green and close. I want these spaced out perfectly. So I'm just going to go up here and distribute them. You of course can do it manually as well. Also make certain they're aligned. So with this, I can now right click and go down to group because I want to rasterize the entire design into a single layer. So layer and rasterize. And now what you can do, you can add effects to it. Just go down the bottom, effects, just click there and go for outer shadow. And you can change radius, change offset and intensity. Now, if I just push it up, now you can see there's a bit of an edge there. I don't want that when I actually create my brush. So click close. Well. Easiest way around that, simply just come over here, rectangle the marquee tool, and just select like that. So you just drag it over there, so none of this edge will be picked up, likewise that side as well. Well, now I can go over here to brushes, right click, and new brush from selection. So new brush from selection, and you can see the design there. Now you can see a problem there doesn't appear to be a shadow. Why? Well, it's just the way it works. So what you need to do is go again over here, make something here, go to layer and rasterize and make certain that that is all joined into one. Otherwise, you will just not get the shadow and rasterize. Now, once you do this, if I go over here, right side menu, new brush from selection. Now you can see you get what? The shadow effect. So let's just remove this, so select and deselect, and just delete it. And now you can manipulate this design, this brush. Just double click it, and you get this. Well, what you can do, you can go down here to spacing, so you can reduce the spacing, so you get a lovely, and let's just press B, just to get the brush, and now apply it. And you can see, this is created. Very basic brush, but it's still really quite nice. But also you can go here to dynamics, and you can go to Rotation Jitter, and that creates a really fascinating, super colorful design. Though, obviously, mainly predominantly the red and the blues, obviously the green's hardly shown. That's in the center, so you can't see it. But if you apply it, you can see now you get that sort of confetti-like effect. Or if you do want to see it, the greens and other colors, just simply change the spacing a bit, so you can actually see the greens coming through, so it's not so intense. And then you can apply it, and you can see then you get again this confetti effect, but this time more blues, more greens all coming through and not just solidly red. You can also change it as well to go for hue jitter. So you just increase that, put it to 100% and now apply that. And now you just get random color designs like that all across the screen. Great for filling a whole design very quickly. And if I go over here, select the there, zoom, so you can see it a bit clearer. Now you can, of course, close this. You can always come back to it later. But let's just go, again, press B, and apply it, and you can fill the entire layer. Now, of course, what you can also do is you can duplicate this layer, and then combine it, maybe apply effects. Simply go to filters, blur, maybe Gaussian blur, just to create a really weird sort of grainy, like, or very unusual gradient effect very quickly in Affinity Photo. Well, what you can also do is let's just remove that. You can also apply it across a straight line, which I think is always quite a nice feature. Again, press B, so you get the paintbrush. And now, instead of all these, you can go for, maybe just reduce it to that. And size jitter. So you can change this in numerous ways. Also, go to the right side. Cyclic is really worth checking out. A whole range of different designs can be created simply by just tweaking this. Just change that, you can see that results in that. Get sort of bulges, all kinds of different shrinking in certain areas, 
and so on. So if you've got that, let's just try it. Just apply it across and you can see the design there. Oh, what you can also do is hold the shift down. So click and hold the shift down and click again the other side. And then you've got it in a nice straight line straight across. Well, this design is lovely and colorful, can also be used as a great brush design. Again, just simply go over here, rectangular marquee tool, select that. And I would again suggest just avoid going over the edge. You just, if you get any sort of imperfections that you end up having gaps. So I prefer just simply just to select it like this. So with that done right, I can then go over here again, brushes, right side menu, new brush room selection. So new brush room selection, and then I get my new brush and it's down here. Now it doesn't look particularly that great at the moment. So select, deselect, let's just remove this one and double click. Now one thing you can always do, probably best if you want, before you start, is actually make it vertical, but I haven't. So if you want, simply just go to there, general, and go to rotation, and now place it like that. I prefer it that sort of design. And also you can then change that, and you can see as you do the spacing, reduce it down, get this nice, nice padded sort of unusual brush again. Press B to get the brush, and you can see now as you apply it across, you get a lovely effect like that. And of course you can also combine other things as well, especially if you've got the vertical here. You can always turn around and say dynamics. You can go for scatter Y. So you can see then, instead of having it just perfectly always the same, you can go across and fill it like that. Apply rotation as well. So rotation, you can get a lovely rotated effect. So let's just apply it now like that. And you can see a sort of windmill design like that very quickly across the entire image. And of course you can modify other settings as well. And also if you want, you can always modify the hugest or again, don't have to keep it. Obviously it's fairly random color already, but now full on random. And again, you can modify these settings here, cyclic if you want, change profiles, and the result slightly different, slightly hard to see in this preview, of course, this tutorial, and you can apply it like that. And as you apply it, you will see the colors change. Though it's, must admit, quite hard to see when you actually look at it like that. But you can also modify the size distance, so you might reduce it down a bit, maybe have it slightly less, and maybe change the spacing so it becomes like a fur-like brush. Unfortunately, you can't crush it any further than 1%. And you obviously modify it even more. And of course, use this as another brush design. So you can always, at any point, let's just remove this. All brush designs can always lead to another brush design. So let's just go over here, elliptical, Ooh, like that. Just create it there. Create something like that. Again, go to the brush tool, press B and apply the brush there. And you can create something like that. Lovely circular design like that, which you can of course manipulate. So close. Now there is a problem sometimes with this. It does seem to forget the settings. So sometimes if you go back to them, you might find you've gone back to the basic settings. I don't know what that happens. And click close. Now, if you want to create a brush again, one of the things I like to do, once I've got something circle like that, I don't want that uniformity. I can always use the move tool, go to filters, go here to distort, deform, and just deform it slightly. So just go around there and just drag it out slightly from that central part to create all kinds of unique designs. And also you can always click outside, push that in, click there, push in again, and so on to create even more abstract designs. And I'm gonna go with that, so click apply. Exactly the same as before, simply go over here to the brushes, right side menu, new brush from section, and now you've got that design. And again, let's just remove that, delete it, double click, and you can see your design there. You can change rotation. You can also go to dynamics and size jitter, scatter, hue there, as well as rotation jitter. And you can create some really weird and wonderful abstract designs that way. And also change the spacing, maybe go that. But you can, if you keep it about 18%, you can see it becomes sort of like weird blobby sort of brush stroke. So you don't have to put it down to 1%. Not every brush works well at that. You can see, you can just put it like that, press B again for the paintbrush. And now you can see, you get this weird design like that. And you might like, before you apply it, let's just undo that, go back. This design, you could also, apply effects to it. So just go down to effects, click there, 
go full 3D, give it a bit of 3D. So you can see, get a lovely effect there. Maybe it out of shadow as well. Though it's got a lot of shadow in it as well, becomes too dark maybe. And click close. Exactly the same as before. Go right click and rasterize. Make certain it all blends into one so you haven't got the effect lost when you go over here. Then you can save that. New brush room selection and now manipulate that. So again, exact same, change that, change dynamics, change rotation. And you know, make it maybe 53, 4, 35, 27. Change size jitter, general, and reduce that down a bit, and now apply a brush. Again, press B because it's just the move tool at the moment, and you can see you get this very surreal, weird effect like that. Sort of globular sort of design. And of course, you don't have to apply it continuously. You can always simply, so simply dab and apply your brush stroke that way to create some really unique, I think, textures, three-dimensional effects. A whole load of different designs could be used with this. Hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. A like or dislike, always appreciated. Bye.